Hi all, welcome to the video. So in this particular video, we are going to learn about cycle detection in a graph. So before learning about how we can detect or how the algorithm for detecting cycle in the graph works, let us learn about what a cycle is or how a cycle is formed in a graph. So if you already know about it and you just want to know about the algorithm, you can skip first few minutes and you can jump into the part where I'm explaining the algorithm. And finally, we'll look at the code, how we will write the code for cycle detection. So let us assume if we have a certain node like this, we have a vertex A, there is a vertex B, we have a vertex C here and vertex C is connected back to vertex A. So this is a directed graph and uh, the scenario where we need to detect cycle will come in a directed graph only. So whether there is a cycle in any directed graph or not, so that we need to find out. So in this example, uh, we can clearly see that from A if we traverse we can go to B from B we can go to C and from C we can go back to A so that is why this part is forming a cycle now this can be a part of bigger graph also for example there can be no or vertex X here B can be connected to say D D can be connected to E and here we can have like something like this F pardon my handwriting so in this bigger graph we can clearly see that this part of the graph this is forming a cycle so how do we detect whether there is a cycle in this graph or not so what the algorithm or the algorithm for detecting the uh, a cycle in the graph says is that we can do a simple dfs and see whether we are visiting back to the node from where we started for example will start from this node say the starting node is this node x uh, we can start from any other node but for simplicity i am just taking this node because it is on the extreme left side so x has a child or it is connected to another vertex the adjacent vertex of x is a so what i need to do is i need to track two things what all things i have already visited and which node is currently is being visited so since i started from this vertex x so currently this is this vertex i can say that this is currently being uh, apologies for that i can say that it is being visited and it is not yet completely visited next we go to a now again when i reach a i can say that a is currently being visited and it is not yet completely being visited why it has not been completely visited because all the adjacent vertex of a they are not yet been visited so when i go to b uh, so the adjacent vertex of a of course is b in this example so i will go to b and uh, i'll set b as again being visited and it is not completely visited yet next for b i will say that what are the adjacent vertex of b so adjacent vertex of b is d and c so let's say we have visited d first so for d i will say that again it is being visited and uh, next we need to visit the adjacent vertex so adjacent vertex of d is e so we will say that it is currently being visited and there is no adjacent vertex so since there is no adjacent vertex it means that traversal of e is done so i can very clearly say that this is no longer being visited and this is this uh, vertex i have already visited so this uh, this part is complete so from e i will backtrack to d because i came to e from d only now are there any other uh, a vertex or adjacent vertex of D which is currently I need to visit there is none E is already visited so it means that everything for D is also complete so even this I can remove the mark as being visited and I can say that this vertex is also visited so these two are completely visited now so I'll come back to B so B status is currently being visited because from here we visited D now for b there is one more adjacent vertex which is c so i cannot mark it as visited i will go and visit c 
so I'll mark this as being visited next the adjacent vertex of C is A and F so let's say we first visited F so for this one also I'll mark it as being visited and since there are no adjacent vertex of F it means that this traversal is complete for F so I will change the status of F and I will say that F has been completely visited now I will come back to C now since C has one more adjacent vertex which is A so I need to go and visit A so when I come to A I see that the status of A is already being visited so it was not completely visited at any point in time and it is currently being visited it means that we are still in the part of traversal and we have come back to a point from where we started so we started from A we went to B from B to C C back to C back to A so since we came back to A and the status of A is still being visited it means that there is a cycle in the graph and the cycle was detected as say index uh, uh, say vertex A so what we can do is we can clearly say that there is a cycle in the graph so this is a simple algorithm here if you have watched my previous video of DFS and BFS where we have used uh, visited as boolean field in our vertex class so what we are going to do in this scenario is we are also going to use one more uh, boolean variable which is called is being visited or being visited or currently being visited anything as you like a field needs to be created there as part of the vertex class and we need to set it as and when we visit it so we'll jump into the code and you will see that how simple it is to detect a cycle so let's see the code for this the vertex class that we have defined for uh, cycle detection is slightly different from what we have defined till now as part of the BFS and DFS and the intro that I have shown you so what additional thing that we have added is this variable which says that being visited and uh, what what is the use of this being visited is same what I explained in the uh, theory section so uh, for now you can see that in vertex class we have this being visited variable and uh, we have the setter and getter for it so now let's move into the cycle detection class so cycle detection will do a simple DFS so we need to check whether there is a cycle in the graph so this graph is like a list of vertex because it can be like a forest so we need to visit each of the vertex of the graph so first we'll have a cycle exist boolean variable which is we will set it as false and we will traverse all the vertex of the graph so if the vertex is not already visited then we'll do DFS and if the result of DFS is false it means that there is a cycle in the graph and uh, we'll set the cycle exist as true and if cycle exists as true then we'll print simply that cycle is present in the graph otherwise we'll print no cycle in the graph now as part of DFS what we need to do we'll follow the same thing what we did till now with the slight change and the slight changes that previously what we used to do is we used to for each vertex before visiting we used to set the visited flag as true what it means is that if if I reach a particular uh, a particular vertex here say vertex A and I need to do a DFS for it so I will say that okay I have already visited this and uh, let's move ahead with the other vertex but in this scenario since there is a chance that a cycle can exist so that is why we will not say that this uh, vertex is already visited we will say that we are currently visiting this vertex so that is why we will set the vertex dot set being visited as true and then we will traverse all the adjacent vertex of this particular vertex so say if this is connected to another vertex b so we'll go to b now if v is being visited what it means that i have come back to the same place for example if you remember uh, in the previous uh, uh, sample we saw that we had something like this c and there was something like this so since when I came to A, I saw that A is already, it is currently being visited or being visited is true for A. What that means is that cycle exists for this particular graph. So that is why we will say if V is currently being visited, we will just return false from here. It means that there is a cycle in the graph. Otherwise, if it is not 
the being visited flag is not set for this vertex we'll check if it is already visited or not if it is not already visited then we'll do dfs starting from that particular vertex so this is again a straightforward dfs code and if dfs is returning me false then i'll return false from here why i'm doing this is to carry forward from any place if being visited was returned as false so i need to return false all the way around and once i have visited all the vertex all the adjacent vertex of the this particular vertex then i will say that being visited is false because i have already visited everything and i will set the visited flag to true and i will return true from dfs so that is as simple as that do let me know in the comment section if you have not understood anything or if some explanation is not clear to you i'll simply run this code and uh, yeah let me draw the graph for you first so there are uh, six vertex here so vertex a is connected to vertex b vertex a is also connected to say vertex e vertex b is connected to vertex c and d so something like this so there is vertex c and there is vertex d and vertex f is connected to vertex vertex f is connected to vertex a okay and uh, so we have certain vertex f which is connected to a and vertex e is connected to vertex f something like this okay so clearly we see that there is a cycle here because when we start from a we'll go to e from e to f and f to a so this code should say that there is a cycle in the graph so let's run this and it says that yes the cycle is present in the graph now let us remove this or i'll comment out this part by commenting out what i am doing is uh, i am simply removing this vertex so commenting out again okay? so now vertex e is no longer connected to vertex f so if i run it again it says no cycle because we have removed the cyclic dependency of the graph so that is it that is as simple as it gets for cycle detection do let me know in the comment section if there is any doubt regarding the video or regarding the concept of cycle detection that is it for this particular video uh, i'll in the next video or in the coming video i am going to talk about the shortest path and before shortest path we'll just learn about topological sorting so that's it for this video see you in the next one take care bye